Okay. Uh, we will call to order the February hearing of the Victorian Village Commission. Um, so our next business meeting is Wednesday, February 22nd at 12 p.m. noon in this room, 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Our next hearing uh, will be Wednesday, March 8th. 2023 at 4 p.m. in this room. No, it's room 205, so we'll be next door. What? Oh. Ooh, okay. We got asked to uh, trade rooms with somebody. So. Okay. So you know not what? this We're room. Here, right? We'll be in room 205. For that. Swear in staff. Do you promise to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. And your name? Kimberly Bernard Sheehy, Deputy Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you. Um, introduction of commissioners present. Jeffrey Issa. Uh, Tim Skinner. Reed Sprite. Melinda Shaw. Pete Schuler. Okay. Uh, anything uh, with a review of hearing format? No. Okay. Um, any public forum? Not today. Okay. Uh, then we can move to approval of staff approvals. Do I have any motion? Motion to approve staff approvals. Second. And we'll be being. We need to do the vote. Yeah. All those in favor? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. And just to read them out for any abstentions, we have 1101 and 1103 Highland uh, Street. And 107 to 111 West 2nd Avenue. Those are the only two. Okay, great. Uh, and then move on to approval of minutes from the January meeting. Motion to approve the minutes from the January meeting. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion pass. And move on to applications. All right, first application is for 200 West 4th Avenue. If the applicant is here and would like to take a seat, you may do so at this time. Is the applicant for 200 West 4th Avenue here? All right, I think this one might be kind of straightforward, so I'm going to read it off. The commissioner, we can discuss if we want to vote on it, continue it, or save it for later after I'm done reading the staff report. So this application is to place 12 solar panels on a detached alley garage. Uh, these panels would be the Eagle modular solar panels measuring approximately 40 inches by 80 inches each. Solar panels would be placed parallel to the roof pitch. Conduits would be placed in the roof under these panels to conceal most of the electrical equipment. Commissioners at the previous hearing were in favor of the solar panels as all their questions and concerns had been addressed during the discussion at the hearing. Staff recommends approval of the application as submitted with any clarifications um, to be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. The basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116-11, the standards for alteration, as well as the National Park Service's solar panels on historic properties bulletin. So we don't appear to have the applicant here. Um, do we want to save this for later in the meeting and possibly vote on it, whether to continue it or to approve it? I think we should save it for later on okay. since we have a short agenda and I think we can probably vote on it because okay. we were pretty thorough last time. Yes, I agree. All right, so we will move on to application number two, which is 1077 to 1081 North High Street. All right, this application is to install a temporary wall banner on the north saw measuring approximately two feet wide by 12 and a half feet high, as well as proposed variances to increase the length of display from 30 days to 180 days, and to increase the allowable graphics area of the banner from 16 square feet to 25 square feet. I've included the comments from the December 14th hearing made by the commission. Uh, commissioners did provide feedback and move a business meeting questioning if the 180 days was still too long for a temporary sign. 
Commissioners should discuss what they consider an appropriate length for temporary signage. Uh, the commission previously required signage elements uh, removed from the two murals on this wall. Uh, they will need to clarify how to sign is different if it's approved. So I will be asking reasons for approval just a warning. Uh, staff recommends continuation of the application to allow the applicant time to investigate signing alterations that meet the short north design guidelines. Basis for recommendation are the short north design guidelines, specifically the general guidelines, wall signs, temporary signs, and banner and flag guidelines. Can the applicant uh, state their name for the record, please? Uh, thank you. My name is Eric Zartman. I am the attorney for the applicant. Okay. Can you raise your hand? Uh, if you also tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Do you have anything to add to the uh, application? Uh, yes, please. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the revisions from the comments of the last meeting. Um, so originally proposed was a graphic that was about 160 square feet and the request was for a temporary banner period of 100 or 365 days. Um, it, thank you, Kimberly. Uh, she pulled up the old, old banner. Um, this included a lot of text. Um, there was a, a model, um, a picture of a model apartment, also the website. Um, in response to comments to remove a lot of the clutter on the, on the graphic, um, now it's just basically an advertisement for the Lux 23, um, kind of to give you a little bug in your brain to go um, Google it later. Uh, so um, reduce the area from 160 square feet to 25 square feet. Um, the code allows a maximum of 16 square feet for temporary banner. So there's a variance to request the increase of the graphic area from 16 feet square feet to 25 square feet. Um, also, uh, the request is to allow the temporary banner to be placed for 180 days. Um, that's a reduction from the previous request of 365 days. Uh, the code allows a, a period of 30 days, so this is a variance request to increase it from one month to six months. Um, so uh, this is a building that just started uh, leasing uh, uh, tenant spaces, and um, they really think it's important that this graphic can get them off to a strong uh, initial leasing period. And um, the reason that we think uh, six months is more appropriate than one month is to it, that's the period that they think that they need to achieve that um, strong start to uh, rent, renting those rooms out. Um, uh, as discussed in, in statement, um, this is a mixed use building, uh, like a lot of the commercial corridor around here. Um, when you look at the building, it, you know, it could be an office or it could be apartments. So we think it's this temporary banner will do a, serve a long way to. Uh, really get people interested in looking at renting space here. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have and I appreciate any feedback that you might have too. Thank you. Comments from the commission. So I have two. Um, part of me says obviously they listened and they reduced it. Um, it's fairly simplified. Um, is there uh, the ability to even slide it down farther so it becomes part of those leaves? Uh, we couldn't really figure it a way. Because if you could, I would be more in favor of something like that that's existing than demarcating it on the brick wall. Um, so they couldn't, we talked about putting in that space to the right over there. Um, there's kind of like an empty space and it um, kind of blended in a little too much, I guess, for them to spot out the temporary banner. So that's kind of why with intent, they, they separated it out like that. Um, I'm curious, are, are you consider or is, is your comment about placing it over the, the leaves or? Yeah, over the leaves, just directly down. I mean, we're starting to run into this more and more that one, we want to engage and help our neighborhoods, but we have really truly defined signage and we have to be consistent across the board on all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's not like the building just opened. I mean, it's it's been open. Right. Um, the well, I think the intent here is just to respect the, the public art um, 
mural, but or the the leaves. But um, certainly, if if this commission felt it'd be more appropriate to move the sign lower and over that graphic or over those leaves, um, absolutely, the the applicant would be open to that. Okay, that's my two cents. Do any other commissioners have comments on placement? I mean, the short term design guidelines do say that signage should be pedestrian oriented. That's why moving it down would, would help. Yes, although we did make the. Uh, um, no. Whoever put those murals up removed their signage from the murals. So we might have to differentiate between why we're allowing the temporary sign versus why we made the. Uh, we have a picture of that. Because was that not was that not incorporated into actually the building signage? I don't think there was signage actually by the artist. I think it was an overlay. Yeah, it was. But we should play a point for a company as parking. Like they said, said something about parking here or something like that. I don't remember because it was. One or two years ago. Two years ago. So we should take a we should take a peek at it. But the I think the initial graphics um, for like the 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 panel the slide. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, I I did that application as well, and that mural is not part of the graphics package for the uh, the building itself. So I, I'm not exactly sure where the public art um, came from or or how that was approved, and I imagine it happened at some point through this through this commission. Location. It came up as a code violation because they put it up and we did have some minor alter alterations for it to be approved by the commission ultimately. Any other comments, you guys? Yeah, I don't disagree with the, the idea of trying to lower it, and maybe try to make it feel a little bit more integrated with what's already there. That, that note that was highlighted there that's to the kind of the right side feel better to me um, but i also understand this is a temporary application and then the concern there was that it felt like it was getting too far back from the yeah uh, a little a little too far back and then also kind of lost in the heart of the rest of it but um certainly if the commission feels that's a more appropriate area Absolutely. I think it would fit in with the pedestrian piece just if it just came down. And also it would scream or advertising for rentals. I guess my question is, and I think this is more for us than the applicant, but so first we say that this one's okay at 12 and a half by two feet, right? And 25 square feet, what's the cutoff, right? If we're going above and beyond the guidelines. Um, you know, maybe it's 30 square feet. Okay, it's 40 square feet. You know what? It's kind of an arbitrary decision. Same, same with the timing. Yeah, yeah same with the timing thing. Yeah. I, I guess from an architect visual standpoint, it feels right. I don't think you could be black and white on a lot of this Fair. stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, and proportionately, it's a big wall. Right. It's a very big wall. So. I mean, if this was a little cottage and we did something like that to like scream. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe given the timing is another one that asks the same question about that. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess to your, your point, uh, uh, Jeffrey, if, you know, if I move down, like I, could, I suppose I could get on board with it. I just kind of worry about. And part of it, I don't know whether we can do this or not, but you know, we are trying to revive the neighborhood. There has been an economic turn down. I mean, I think and they've reduced it from 360 to 180. I think, you know, that type of language helps this, meaning it frames it in a specific time frame and what they're trying to do. That would be my my two cents. But you guys, you know. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a struggle between are we kind of just working our way around the normal sign rules? But then again, I agree, I, I just don't. It, Accommodations were made to what we asked before, and it, it seems reasonable to me. We're just going to have to state reasons if you approve it. Because I want to make sure that, you know, if somebody comes back asking, well, why was this one was approved? I can give them solid, you know, reasons from the commission. 
Okay. Great. So are we all okay on placement if that kind of shifts over into that empty space by the leaves? Or no, we want it to go straight down so it becomes part of the leaves. Would you like the top of it to be aligned with the top or in the middle or um, sort of towards the bottom? I think I think starting where the, the white box is from there down. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, lower is better trying to get it more in the pedestrian view. I know the intent is for traffic, but trying to make it a little bit more pedestrian. Probably. We're okay with that. That's our justification well we're covering existing some existing artwork of some kind right i don't know if that matters but i think that that it's already visual interest and we're not creating new visual interest on that and the sheer size of the wall that it's on portions of the wall yeah. and then also uh, just Post-pandemic economics, and it's a difficult. But we don't review based on economics. On uh, we don't review on economics or financials on the first review. Well, this is a hardship of. But we still it's, we're an architectural review commission. Yeah. Well, I guess that one's out the door. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I understand what you're going for. I don't necessarily disagree, but we're an architectural review commission, so we don't want to slide too far down the rabbit hole. Okay. You need something hard and fast, or is it like because the scale seems to work at that enough? Or I mean, I prefer more specific. And if you got since we've discussed placement, um, if you want to kind of mold that over a little bit and start talking about timing, because you know maybe something in timing trips another reason as well, and we can revisit it with the motion. I guess one thing would be to look at it. I, I don't know if this helps given the building isn't. That new, but is that as a new structure with trying to build that uh, that sense of identity for that building, you know, uh, and that for some period of time after the building is constructed, it might be appropriate to have this type of signage. Just don't know what that number is, and it's how long has the building been built? Yeah, I think two years. Two years. All right, so that's and it's not please. It predate when I started working at the city, and, and certainly before I started staffing Victorian Village. It's not fully linked. Can we just say um, adjust adjustments and variants due to scale of wall and existing graphics? Oh, I, I think that covers what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that summarizes it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. All right. Any other comments? Do you have a motion? And yep. Uh, a motion on application BV2212017 1077 to 1081 North High Street. Uh, motion to approve uh, the application uh, with the condition that the banner be uh, brought down uh, vertically on, uh, on that wall to cover uh, part of the existing uh, graphics and, and mural on that space uh, and make it more pedestrian friendly. Uh, you know, and we're citing what, what Jeffrey had previously said. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Right. We still have the variances because those have, oh. to be set, those have to be recommended. So do I have a motion for the variances? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so motion on application BB2212017, 1077, 1081 North High Street. Uh, motion to approve the two variances to sections 3375.15B and C uh, uh, to meet the uh, application. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And same reasons as previously stated. Yeah, correct, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We watching how you position that. Yeah, we'll move it down. We'll start the <laughs> clock on the 80 days. Ah, day 181. 
All right, application number three is 23 West 2nd Avenue. This application is for landscaping and a hardscaping um, plan for the courtyard along with 2nd Avenue. Landscaping is to include plantings, including shade trees and shrubs with ground cover. Hardscape to include floating benches, outdoor sculpture, and concrete. Commissioners provided feedback in lieu of the business meeting requesting existing photos of the site. Uh, HBO staff does rec does not recommend the use of bamboo in landscaping. While different varieties exist, bamboo tends to be somewhat invasive, which can lead to damaging other landscape or hardscape elements. Uh, Non-climbing ivy or another spreading plant may be less damaging. Staff does recommend approval of the application with the condition that the bamboo is removed from design. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.13, standard for site improvements, as well as the Victorian Village Guidelines on fences and yards. Can you state your name for the record? Jessica Sharon. Yes, yeah, sure. Do you promise to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, right. Anything to add to the application? Uh, yeah, thank you. A uh, couple points just for those who haven't been here through kind of the more of the process of previous approvals. We did get project landscape approved, I believe, in June of 2022. So that was for the surrounding site around the new construction. We did withhold this. We wanted to talk to some potential early tenants and see, okay, well, if we're going to design something, is this something you might use? Or, you know, how can we make sure that this is like a well utilized area? So that's why we withheld it. And we did have some of those conversations. So we wanted to design a space that we could use for our tenants that could be a community asset, but that also could then function, you know, if we get a restaurant tenant and they want to have some seating out there or, you know, they go through the right approval processes or, you know, we want to host like, I don't know, a little yoga thing out there. So wanted some of that flexibility. Um, you'll see in here uh, a little circular area with kind of the red in the middle of it. We are potentially going to put a sculpture there, but we haven't talked about what that might be or how it might function. So if it were to become something that is signage, for instance, or that would require approval, we would, of course, come back. But I just wanted to be transparent about that. Um, and then on the comment about the bamboo, it's in pretty select areas. My, our landscape architect feels pretty good about it not spreading, but knowing we have a large landscape architect on the board and knowing um, the city's comments, we're open to switching. So we would propose if there is an alternate required that, um, and I'm totally gonna butcher this, but David Vivernum as like an alternate plant material, if that's accepted. So um, I believe that is it. I don't know what that is. What do you think? Well, it's a Viburnum. Mm -hmm. um, I have it here. I don't know. Yeah, is this the photo. A, it, that just um, doesn't seem like a a lycra like mm -hmm. substitution. It's just in a couple select areas. It's kind of over in the upper it's right. It's, it's, it's not labeled. Uh, no, it is. It's, not the, it's, the, it's the green stripe. Is the wait? No, the horse tail is a different. Yeah, that's not the bamboo. That's not the bamboo. The, it's the loose stripe is the ah, bamboo. Geez. Um and there's a I think there's a second one in there too. Uh and I would agree with that, but the that the um there's two types. There's a clumping and then there's a um, a spreading or a I think it's another term for running mm -hmm. is a term. And I think this is a running variety that uh, is Could kind spread. of a no-no. Okay. Um even the clumping is questionable. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would err on not doing those. Okay. Um, you could also I had to take those out of the pizzuti. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. It was just and, and, go over the floor. Yeah, are, we don't want that. We don't want that. Are, there are locations around here where you can see it, and mm -hmm. it, it does. It's very aggressive. Yes. Um, so I think I would be. I would agree with that recommendation. Okay. Not including that. I'm not convinced that viburnum is the right thing. I, okay. I see that as a, I'm not familiar with that variety, mm -hmm. but I see that as usually a, a larger shrub, and I don't think that's necessarily mm -hmm. the intent on that. Sure. Um, so I think there are other other options that could be, you know, to get that texture or what mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve. Um, the overall planting scheme and arrangement, I think, is fine. The intent is fine. It's just that species. Sure. Um, while we're at it, I would also suggest that. Japanese barberry is also borderline invasive as well. And that's one that can um, 
it's a non-native, and not to say it has to be a native species, mm -hmm. but it's not native and it can spread uh, via a uh, bird. Uh, mm. uh, and it, it can be very aggressive as well. Okay. For their natural areas. Okay. Yeah. Even the horse tail says it spreads to form large colonies in the wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is, that one's a little bit more native. That one I don't have as much heartburn about. I think it can create a nice a, a, a impact. So I don't have an issue with that one in particular. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fern, it, it's also a tough area. It's, it's north facing. So I know yeah. part of the challenge, you know, yeah. I would say a grass could do the same thing, but it's not gonna do well in the right. shade. Right. Um, so I understand the the challenge there, um, looking at if it's for lower areas, looking at variety. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's other options out okay. there of, of stuff that can work sure. in shaded areas that would be more appropriate. Okay. Anything else? My only other comment is the the elevation doesn't seem to quite match up with what um maybe I'm looking at the wrong. Do you know what that elevation is? looking at is that looking at the yeah so oh, that's that from north to south that is yes okay yeah the i would love to understand the view from second that streetscape view a little bit better there's kind of a there's kind of a tough corner there where mm -hmm. you have a sort of linear shape hitting the the walls and I don't not to say that what you're doing I, I don't know it's hard to tell if it works or not but there's like a detail there of how that interacts those two you know you I think you have that seat wall mm -hmm. coming through and then a concrete wall that's kind of staggered and yeah. it's not real clear how that meets and it's right on the okay. public way the streetscape that I, I think we would I would like to understand that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any so, other comments? So, do you, you want to continue, or you want to do a subcommittee, or what are you thinking? That's like there's a lot. Of I would be okay with this if if we're it's generally okay. It's just we're generally okay with the overall with understanding that detail and some plan substitutes. I'm okay with the subcommittee. If everyone I am is just to keep that spot. Keep moving. Is that sorry, I think I'm not familiar with that. Is that like staff approval or is that something different? So it's a little bit different. Okay. It'll mean you'll submit the documents or the updates the commission has asked for to me, and then I'll send it over to them. Okay. And then I give them about a week before I start bothering them to give me email responses if they haven't emailed me um, things back yet. And they'll either let me know that I can prove something okay. or that they have additional comments. I do like to warn applicants this can take longer than if they continue it. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so because they leave, leave that up to you. If I, that feels fair, I want to make sure that you all feel comfortable with what we have. I'm really confident in it, but I understand that we are missing a detail, and I do want to. I'm not a landscape architect, so I want to make sure that when we are switching out for different varieties for those two plantings, that we're getting something that feels native, feels like it's going to thrive in the area that fits the context of the project. So um, I think those are, I think we have probably the elevation and I do think those switch switch outs are fairly easy. So on my end, I don't think it's going to take too long. So I'm, yeah, I'm okay with that. So, okay. Okay. With the subcommittee or with continuing? With the subcommittee. subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, do I have a motion? So just a motion to continue and then with the subcommittees of formal, do we send? So you approve it with the subcommittee review. Okay. So it's a motion to continue. All right, I got it. Uh, motion uh, an application BV 23020423 West 2nd Ave to send to subcommittee. Second. What is, what's the subcommittee? The plant person. Me either. <laughs> well, I, I, oh, I, I, Jeffrey, I, Jeffrey yes, I didn't put out. Okay, so subcommittee of Skinner and Hissom. That's good. That's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. He usually disagrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> Got a 50-50 Did I get a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion. And I want to clarify. Uh, motion to approve as noted with those plant changes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I want, want to make sure we're specific. 
Alrighty. Motion pass. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Have a good one. Appreciate it. All right, application number four is 870 Denison Avenue, the rear. Uh, this application includes the demolition of an existing building, as well as new construction to construct a 33 feet deep by 36 foot, uh, 10 and a half inch wide by 23 and nine and a half, or 23 feet, nine and a half inch tall for the unit building. Uh, two siding options, were originally proposed, there was a third option that has been added in by the applicant. Uh, one option has the horizontal clapboard siding, while the other has the horizontal clapboard siding with hardy shingle siding on the north and south elevations. And I don't recall what the third elevation is, but I'll let the applicant explain that. It came over to me after I did my staff report, so unfortunately missing that portion. So the siding is to be a hardy plank lap siding with that optional hardy shingle siding out of wood. Uh, the proposed decking is the timber tech composite decking. The roof over the porch would be the only supporting the three tab in a state gray with the building roof to be reinforced with rubber membrane. Windows would be the Marvin Elevate series and the doors would be uh, the Thermotru Smooth Star that three fourth slate with a single panel. All railings would be 49 ironworks, the wrought iron in the style 421 and this would also include removing the existing black walnut tree and planting up uh, two new trees installing two um, parking paths between the existing house and the proposed house i did include the commissioner comments from the september 19th hearing this was the last time we saw this application um, hbo staff does not support the hardy board siding per city code 31 16 12 standards for new construction which states where brick predominates in nearby structures and construction shall be a brick. If frame predominates in nearby structures, then construction shall be a frame. No more vacant land predominates, brick shall be preferred. Uh, commissioners provided feedback in the this business meeting stating that the mixing of materials on the north and south sides was not appropriate and that those elevations needed are fined. Uh, two siding pattern options have been provided by the applicant and technically it's three. Um, the commissioners do need to discuss um, basis for or staff recommendation is to continue the application to have the applicant time to revise design for the brick exterior with consideration of city code 3116.12 specifically N. basis for staff recommendation is 3116.14 the standards for demolition and 3116.12 standards for new construction as well as the victorian village guidelines on new construction okay Let's state your name for the record. My name is Gary Alexander. Crystal Summer. Yeah. You guys swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Good. Okay. Anything to add to the application? Uh, well, since we've been before you, we did get the variances granted, the council variances. So thank you for your support for that. Um, we did listen to your comments. Um, and there's a third proposal that I'll, I'll mention. I'll discuss because I think it's more responsive to some of your comments about the side elevations here. Um, following the last meeting, we did develop a flat roof option, which was your preference. I think at the last meeting, we all discussed how actually the frame is appropriate with siding here because all the surrounding buildings are frame buildings in this area. So it's and it's not uncommon. In fact, there's precedent for off the islands having non masonry buildings. But we did uh, develop the flat roof option. Uh, there are details in the drawings that were submitted of the cornice. There was a comment um, that was made to develop a cornice. There's a cornice that's about 14 inches tall. It has uh, about three pieces of trim on that. Uh, it's a flatter cornice than a traditional cornice, but it does reflect some articulation at the top of the building. Um, I don't know if you recall the earlier elevations, but we actually had paired windows on the front elevation. Um, and then the door. So to simplify the front elevation, we eliminated one of those windows, but the door is a three quarter light. So it has a um, glass to provide the natural light that that other window was providing. Um, that's the same thing on the back to provide some natural light. The, uh, the side elevation that we submitted, but I think we did submit it before your deadline on Friday, we submitted shows um, hardy uh, 
Gordon Batten signing on the upper, and I have a drawing of that if it's not, if it's not. Is it upper and lower? Just upper. And it wraps around, because I thought using the horizontal siding on the lower part, it ties the front with the sides and the back. So the hardy and see it up there so I'll, sure, I think it might be that third page 14. there we go so in that version which is actually something we did on a carriage house here in the village about three years ago that you approved so um where we had the board and batten on the upper and then we had party on, on the lower. because of the grade change there's a lot of foundation that's exposed so across the alley from the structure is a garage that has rock that's made of rock face block. So that's what we're doing in the exposed portions of the elevation. So it's not split face, it's a rock face. So it's it's more uh, articulated than a split face block. The columns are just simple columns that have a little bit of taper, a little bit of trim at the head and base. Windows have a simple crown mold. They're in the on the approved list, the front porch is open all the way across with wrought iron railings, just dividing the three sections. And the back, because the grade change is essentially an arcade, so we just have a wrought iron railing across that so people don't fall off the actual porch. So we're here to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, thank you. You know what I see? I like how this has come along, but I see it all in board and bat. I think it would play to the compactness. I think it would play to the verticality. And I think the side would look fine also, just because it's broken down vertically. That's my two cents. I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> so I think Board and bat isn't that typical for the different version. Well, what we earlier tried to do on the sides is because in the front and back, you can read the, the division of three uh, because the opening pattern, you can see the three units. So we tried to divide the front or the two sides with trim into three panels as well, just to break it up a little bit. And then the second version, well, I know the shingles were not well received in an earlier proposal we brought before you. All the buildings around that in that area have wood shingles. So, uh, so here again, it was an attempt to tie it in with the context, but the response was not very favorable. So that's why it was brought to the third. So, uh, comment from staff on brick based on. So, so last time we were here, I brought this as well. So these are all the buildings within about a block radius okay. of what they're built out. For me, it helps having the visual. The hard thing is the gray ones just disappear into the background, but there are a lot of gray ones. And, and the gray is the wood side. In particular, in the alley. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but if you're looking at buildings that are more than duplexes, they're typically brick in the alley. But do we want to? The gave you the front porch. I thought I thought we crossed that. I thought we crossed the Rubicon on that. That's why we've developed this because the siding, the last yeah, we we're, we're okay saving with that. The I think it was their articulation of the detail. Yes. Like all, all of you seem to acknowledge. Because yeah, I think that's what we had talked about before: is that if we did the front porch then we would be okay with the material. Yeah, and I, I think we have some new commissioners since this process started, so just want to make sure maybe it's up to up to speed yeah. with where we've where we've been. There was a, a site visit to this location to kind of look through mm -hmm. heavy fire damage. It's pretty clear that the ability to save the structure is not achievable. So it was a brick structure to begin with um, observation of what is surrounding as we see in this diagram, particularly in this area of the alley. Good 
it's not predominantly brick, although things in that kind of that next layer out of Monson Street and down Wilbur Avenue are predominantly brick. And I think we're just also at a time sensitive matter too, because we're at our very last permit to extend yep. to tear this down and we've been trying to negotiate because the building department from the start, Kimberly and I are in the middle of this. The building department says we can tear it down because of the order that they provided for this building. And preservation and the boss identified a section code that says no, you can't. So we thought we have to work with you anyways for whatever we do. So we've been trying to follow this path but the building department's pushing and saying, you know, at some point. Yeah, because it's, it's getting, I mean, you guys were all out there. There's a lot of squatters. I mean, every time I go, every time I visit that piece of property, it's, I'm cleaning something up. Cleaning someone's tent, someone's belongings, water gets turned on. It's, it's a nightmare. So the faster that we can move forward on this, it would be really appreciated is we've been now working on this for a year and a half. And part of that was an insurance issue. Just point of order, I guess. Did, I, I thought we approved the demo on this, didn't we? We did not. No, okay. in, or, in order to approve the demo, you actually have, you have to have the full. Yes. I think you gave him like a blanket, like you were all okay with the demo. Yeah. yeah okay. Sort of. I remember that. I was like, I just remember. Yeah, because I left thinking, like, yeah, we can just. That's right. I know. But Gary's like, well, no. We did not want to apply for the yeah. variant, variances unless you were okay with the demo. So right. that's that's why we yeah. took that step. Yeah. Okay. okay. So how do we get off the mark here, Commission? Well, I think we need to figure out the brick thing to finalize that. You said you. you I you thought that you did the last piece sale, and I thought we said siding was. You, you did. Yeah, we so did. I, I agree with that. So I guess we need to put that to, to rest, and then it becomes option one, two, or three, right? Yes. Or some compromise. Or something we work out here. And Jill, Christian, you'll have to know why you're approving it. Just not a brick. Yeah. yeah I, that, that section of code is going to be for you. <laughs> Got it. Because if I said we would do all board and bat, that's, I don't think we we'd have the votes for that. So you tell me, what, you know, we'll, we'll, I think we can make them all work. You're not talking about changing the window pattern. It's not going to change the floor plan. So yeah, you're. Yeah, I mean the porch already put <laughs> over budget. Things, so. so of the three options, are there any that we can quickly eliminate? Three. Or three to be I want to eliminate two and three. So. <laughs> okay. So, so you have a clear at least one that is yeah. standing out among. And which one is standing out for you? The first one, the first one. The horizontal siding, but I would also top horizontal, top and bottom. Yeah. Me too. It's the easiest, <laughs> cleanest, yeah. and it's the most comprehensive for it to, for the vocabulary to work together. I think. And that was actually the one I liked the best too. So. I agree. All right, and then out of this option, does the commission think any changes need to be made? But so, and uh, you're going to kill me for this one, but the only thing that I saw that that I know visually you're beefing it up, but I wish we could see a little bit of uh, the cornice built out, some something that gives us some dimension. We're not saying three feet. I'm not saying a foot. I'm just saying. I hope I don't offend. What I'm trying to avoid is near my office on the 11th, there's somebody who did an addition in front, and the cornice is out like it's enormous. It's like a foot, it's a foot and a half tall. I mean, it just it just looks ridiculous. And so, you know, I guess there's a middle ground. We could build it out more. We've got to have the metal coping at the top because it's unavoidable to try to keep water out of the wall. So it's going to be three inches of metal across that top, regardless of how big how big we make it. But you know, if that's if there was a way that we could submit that detail 
I would be fine with that. I just think can't staff, because they can't. Yeah, staff approval for a revised Princeton code. And I'd be fine with horizontal and be good to go. Well, and, and I agree that we're not like like a flip from brick to the siting, but that was always kind of a, like a one little nugget from that brick building. That that simple brick building that stands out is there's some detail on that that top piece. I think that you know just you I can don't definitely agree with the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other information that we need? Um, there's a door. And here, there's the, the Timber Tech deposit material, which was, again keeps keeps coming up, and I think we've had been leaning towards with the right detail. That's all that detail of it of the tongue and groove. And we have a there's a note on there and a detail showing an apron around the perimeter of that. So it's all you don't see any edges. Now, is it the timber tech that's the width of decking, or is it because timber tech makes two? Well, they make a lot of products, but one is the width of typical like uh, suburban decks. And they also make a true uh, tongue and groove narrower that's more like porches. Well, this one isn't. I, I know what you're talking about. The old uh, pine, the pine decking that you see on some of the porches. Yeah. So this one is. It is a five and a half, but it, but the, the joints, it's not a slab, like some Trex products that you can see yeah. straight through. So the joints These are grouped really, because of the joints. Yeah, I have this is really similar. Okay. So, uh, but it's not in the joint. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the point there is that we've been um, evolving a bit on the being strict on that material, but the it's the it's the detail of it and the scale. So you want to narrow as narrow a width as possible. Is that using their their the timber tech porch material? It's much more similar to what a, what the design guidelines intend is as being a the tongue and group porch decking. It's detailed like it. It's the width of it. It's just. In the actual material we see. This is tongue and groove, but it's not it's not it's not tongue tongue. and groove, it's groove and groove. It's a groove on both sides. It doesn't have a tongue on both sides. Okay. So that's two that's really your proposal we does then. Right. It's, it's, it's a uh, we didn't have any of this coach. Is this something you'd like to see? Yeah. I mean the, the, I'd say I put this and the cornice on subcommittee. Okay. That makes sense. That subcommittee you're thinking? I think so. Okay. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And if, so if, come back with if we do, if we go to subcommittee, do they need the final approval from subcommittee before demo can proceed? Yes, so okay. I will not issue a, a demo approval until I can issue the design approval. Okay. Because we have had some people take a demo approval and run with it, and then they don't always build the replacement. Yeah, product. no, you're just talking about two details. That's that's mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. What would the timeline of that do? So it depends on the commissioners. Because these guys are all volunteers. They are fantastic. But sometimes if their work schedules get busy as well as their personal life, so I give them a week. And if we get to that end of that week, I will typically follow up with them and say, hey, where are things? Generally, everybody's pretty good, but That's people have those weeks or months that are just not. So I can't guarantee, but I like to try to get it at least comments back to applicants within a week. Okay. And so we're not talking demo approval another two months from now. I'm hoping not. Okay. It's typically it runs about a month. Like if it's going to run long, it runs about a month. Like baby yeah. and a half. Typically, that's for more complicated asks. Like the commissioners have asked for section details of trim that are in like wonky transitional spaces which are really hard for anybody to do because i think we only have about six to seven weeks left with laura's yeah. recent submission that we did and that's also scheduling somebody to get the contractor out there and get that to her for because i don't know if they'll grant us another extension that's the spirit of this is to try to keep this moving forward quicker than coming back. Great. 
but again, no guarantee, but that is that is the, the goal here. Um, door is included. Are we okay with the door? And you mentioned shingle. Yeah, we were just talking about it. The shingles yeah. on your came right from your proof list. So you can, yeah. As, as did the windows. Okay. That's the question. The orange corning for the shingles, right? I thought it, yeah, the Owens Corning through Japanese estate gray. I remember reading that off. Is this another one? I believe those are also off of the approved list. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the commission? Do I have a motion? I think we do. Uh, uh, motion to uh, for uh, application VV23020587 Denison Avenue. Uh, motion to approve the application uh, with sub uh, with subcommittee approved uh, review of the cornice uh, detail and the timber tech uh, uh, porch uh, flooring decking uh, to, to be reviewed by subcommittee. Uh, in terms of uh, brick, uh, we are approving the wood frame construction, uh, notwithstanding the code. 31, 16, 12, and uh, which just says you know, what's predominant in the area and should, should be used, whether it's frame or wood frame or brick. I think the commission here, we looked at the alley, we think that, that it is a mix in that, that area, but that wood is appropriate given the other buildings <clears throat> along that, uh, that alley and in the immediate vicinity of, of uh, that structure. We add that we are specifically the option A for elevation. Good call. Yes, uh, and then we, are, uh, as far as the three alternatives for the siding, uh, we're opting for the first option, option A, with the uh, horizontal siding uh, with trim that breaks up the, the sidewall there. All right. Who's subcommittee? So, uh, I'll do it. That's fine. Yeah. All right, so Commissioner Shaw, uh, Shaw and Sprite? Yeah. And do I have a second? Second. Any, any other comments, discussion? Hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, so we have to approve the demo separately. Yeah. Yeah. So I just need a motion B. Okay, uh, so motion uh, on application VB2302005. 870 Denison Avenue, uh, motion to approve uh, demolition of the existing structure. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for working with us. I know we're a pain sometimes, but <laughs> we get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then application number five is 21 West Hubbard, uh, Hubbard Avenue. If you gentlemen want to come up, this application is for the demolition of the rear single story portion of this building, as well as for new construction to construct a new 15 story mixed juice building at 17 to 25 West Hubbard Avenue. The overall building height would be 180 feet. The structure would be built in the rear section of the building and it is designed with all four sides being masonry with the intent to select a brick similar to the existing materials. I've included the commissioner comments from the June 8th hearing, which was the last time we saw this project. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval for building height, general massing, awnings over the right of way, and the vehicular drop off pickup feature on the wall alley. Changes from the last review include development of the exterior fenestration and detailing tweaks to the massing that include a minimal extension of the base over the rear section of the high street facade to generally improve the parking maneuverability and efficiency, realignment of the parking and building entries on Wall Street to align with the Hubbard Park Place development, new awnings, and the development of the vehicular drop-off pickup feature on Wall Street, an extension of the masonry at the top of the building to replace the metal mechanical screen wall. Uh, commissioners have previously reviewed a 12 story building and this design does include 15 stories. So question for the commission. Is this still appropriate for COVID guidelines? 
Uh, we had discussed going up to 180 and recommending the variances, but I still feel like we should discuss. Staff does recommend continuing of the application to the, allow the applicant to refo, uh, refine the proposed design. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.14, the standards for demolition, uh, 30, and as well as city code 3116.12, the standards for new construction. Uh, I will also note that we did receive a public comment, which was passed out to the commissioners as well as the applicant from the Short North Pacific, Short North Civic Association. And I just wanted to mention that so we got it in the public record. And the applicant state the name is Mark Wood with Wood Companies. Derek Bonar. Promise that we choose the name of the We do. Yes. Thanks. We were hoping our architect would be here by now. He must be running late, so yeah. we're um, you know, hoping he'll walk in any minute and join us. But um, we'll do our best to present, <laughs> you know, and answer questions as, as well as we can. So yeah, yeah. Um, if I could just kind of lead off, I think we've. Um, I think last time we were here, it's been several months. You know, we talked about, you know, kind of embracing the. The top of the building, so we, you know, the idea of switching to masonry instead of a screen wall, kind of fit the Art Deco um, direction of the, the project is was feedback that we had, and we, we so we kind of embraced that and um, you know extended the, the masonry um, up um, as, as part of that kind of um, thought process. Um, I think one of the most successful things we've done with this um, next round is this. Um, drop off zone on the alley where we've really embraced the alley being the front Hubbard Park close to the um, I think that pedestrian walkway connector to the street was a really clever way of kind of um, I, give, I guess giving homage to the front arches on the front of the building and also serving a, a really nice purpose of um, pedestrian access. Uh, here, here we if we can um, pause just for a minute, minute and let um, our architectural team join us, um, they will be more eloquent than I will be talking about what we're doing. Um, so, do you want to do some of these ones? Yeah. State your name, please. Dan Haynes, Columbus Star Architectural Studio. He's for to tell the truth, not the truth. I do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so Dan, uh, just giving a little bit of. Um, Reflection on the um, extending the masonry up to instead of where the screen wall was, right? To the metal screen wall. I, I think that was some feedback that the, the commissioners had kind of embraced the idea that our yeah. income and further bonus of it. And um, so that was something that we, we made change on. And I just started talking about the vehicular drop off, right? Which we think number one really gives some embellishment to the alleyway that. Um, that, you know, the alleyways I think are often kind of forgotten to play a sense of place and we're trying to give a sense of place. You know, also serves a really, I think, purposeful um, purpose for us in terms of congestion, um, especially for some deliveries and pickup of um, trying to get the traffic off of Hubbard and give some relief in the alley. Right. So, as, as you uh, can tell, since you own the building on the other side of the alleyway as well, too, that, you know, that alleyway is used a lot for drop offs and Ubers and the Amazon trucks and all of those things. And so it's, we went through this planning and design. We wanted to make sure that we did a couple of things with sort of these updates that we're bringing to you today. Creating enough space in that alleyway that will allow for more vehicular pieces. But what we had shown prior, there wasn't much uh, public access, pedestrian access back as well too. So we've carved into the building to the usable square footage allowed for drop off to allow for more of that, but also a pedestrian way out to the sidewalk so that you have, you know, pedestrian connection from Hubbard back into the what we're calling the hotel lobby entrance as well too. there. So that's something that we've added to this piece. Um, I think other architectural embellishments that we've done, you know, we've just increased the level of architectural detail uh, more um, brick turns, more brick detailing. Um, I think typical at this phase of the project, we're trying to find ways to make it dumber. This, I think, you know, Mark is looking to create a building that's going to last for a long period of time. And so we've been actually putting some more embellishments onto the building. 
Um, we've also looked at how the balconies were and the prior scheme versus this team. And we had some bay windows, but we're trying to make sure that we're more consistent in the language all the way around. I, I think one of the, you know, from my perspective, too, the things I'm most excited about are this is kind of parking drop off zone, which I think really gives uh, that alley a sense of place. I, and when Schooly Caldwell kind of proposed that we put our front entry to Hubbard Park Place on the alley, we were kind of like, you know, it took some time to digest that, but really, I think it was the right decision. But this really kind of completes that kind of um, expression and experience. And um, you know, the, the other thing I think is really handsome here is the limestone along the Hubbard entry. Right. And the um, spandle glass that um, creates a rhythm above the, the front entry, you know, that really successfully hides the parking right. and um, makes it feel like it's, you know, living space. And then uh, the, the, the inspiration for that, uh, Dan was on uh, the hotel, right? <laughs> oh, it's the entry piece, it was the yeah. Waldorf Astoria. Uh -huh. yeah. With how that kind of um, spandle glass really right. worked. Um, but we think that's a really um, stunning entrance, you know, point for the for the Hubbard facade. Right. You can see in that view there, and I think even further down in the package, you'll see sort of that pedestrian archway that we're creating back through there, so that you can have pedestrian access as well. So, you know, I think that what we're really trying to um, did you? Sorry, I'm late. But did we talk about sort of what we're looking for at this phase? Um, I think there. Were, um, We've we went in, we've gone in for sort of conceptual. This is, and I think in our mind is an update to that conceptual piece. Uh, since we've been developing for a while, we wanted to give it to everyone to get some additional feedback. Uh, we are trying to get to our CC plan and utility sort of movement. So we really would like to get a true vote on the ground plane as well. Um, but if you're, tr uh, um, but we'd love to get feedback also on the rest of the building. We know we have a long process for utility relocation, door approval, all those things that are going to have to happen before we can you know, advance this project. So we kind of get to the point where we can take those next steps. Right. So the applicant is asking for a partial approval, essentially, of the project, uh, anything procedural. Center. We typically recommend the entire project is approved just because Approving in pieces parts can get kind of messy, but I will leave that up to the commission's comfort. And the bare minimum, we should be offering the applicant clear feedback on, you know, we are supportive of certain elements or if we're not supportive and what, you know, they might need to do. And maybe another thing that I think this application also predates some of the commission in terms of its its history getting us back up to date with where we are now. Went through the conceptual view, review. We had a subcommittee that went on site to- We did a site visit. Which site visit to review the condition of the piece that is being asked for demolition. There's conversation about its contribution to the overall whole of, of the um, property. And I think we were getting to a comfort level there based on what has already been preserved. So also we asked for a study of height comparison, not just in, you know, relative to itself, but relative to what's around it. Previous review looked at a couple different height versions, and that's where the, the ruling on potential allowable height came from. Um, the question I have is, you know, going from the 12 to 15 stories, um, I think floor floor to floors change. What what's the so the height where we where we were last time right of 12 story in total height versus now? I'm just kind of curious that it's different. the same overall height. Same what height. has happened is we yeah. drop an office floor, mm -hmm. and the way that we've configured the parking, we have allowed that to sort of drop down a bit to allow just more of the reach. The residential floors in so we've not gotten any taller we've okay. just sort of reshuffled the sausage if you will yep. to fit in that envelope yeah thank you all right comments from the uh, commission so i only have one comment i think it's been it's coming along i think what um this is a big building it makes a big statement i 
what what I have problems with is the front piece. So if you could just pull up three and then nine, this is just my suggestion. So if we look uh, one more. Uh, there, this one, if we look at this angle, you know, I would love to see this thing slide under so we get horizontal. So this is limestone, even though it never was, mm -hmm. but the building comes back. And then if we go to number nine, the elevation, I think that really engages that part. Instead of saying this is the building and this just happens to be on the front, this has some autonomy in and of itself, and the new building kind of comes over. That would be my only. Okay. I think that's an interesting solution. I like that idea. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, we were always it really does of do the this existing, and it makes you know? the block whole yeah. mm -hmm. versus. I agree. I think it would be a very successful way of doing that transition. So I do have to ask that, that extra pump out. So what was that? Was that relate? What was that related to to add to kind of tack that that front bump out on the on there? It, it's parking. So sure. instead of us going up with parking, we got with there or cantilevering those that in parking bay over. It almost doubles our efficiency of parking. And I'm one of the you know I, I don't know if how very many people in the short north have, have gone below grade with parking, and we've done that project after project. It's a huge commitment we've made for the inefficiency of. The way this was ramping before compared to what we can achieve here is you know really significant and it's, it's a super expensive building we're proposing you know with all pt construction going up through it and that gives some relief to you know uh, uh, other investments to be made you know later and with that interconnection i think it really improves that really doesn't even it yeah. kind of goes away i think you're right yeah yeah i, I mean i still like i I get the need for it. I'm just one. It just to me, it looks like it was tacked on, and that's not just because it came. It was in addition to the last uh, you know, design we saw, but um, it it doesn't. I mean, if there's a way to smooth that transition, I think what Jeffrey pointed out with uh, the the dealership building below, you know, and maybe that would help integrate it. But it's just you know the blank the blank brick the the windows that don't quite fit with the rest of it. It just looks like it was literally like. Let me stick this on the side. So I, I don't know if there's any way to kind of smooth that out. If the Hubbard Avenue facade there on the front had a window that dropped down, do you think that would help with kind of that window rhythm? Definitely. I think that would It's a lot of solid wall. Uh -huh. like, right. Sure. Right. Sure. Let us look at that then. On the on the high street side where we're putting the bottom of that window, it's just sort of fire separation. We're limited to a certain height. Right? So we will have some solid wall there. But I think on the Hubbard Street side, bringing that down would be a nice addition. Again. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I echo the comments on the on the lower level material, um, you know, kind of the spirit of what we're talking about, about that massing. I almost wonder if without further attention, it's actually going to make it worse that you it's going to feel more like a an object that's kind of tacked on versus right now it's almost this, you know, clean vertical element that it's its own strip, you know, in, in the sequence. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that as we continue to evolve that piece to, to pay close attention to that. I'll, uh, I'll chime in here. I wasn't here the uh, first time and I think I'm in the minority here. First of all, I love this building. It's a beautiful building. Um, I think just about everything you've done in the neighborhood is beautiful. Um, I do think it is a massive bill. I think it's overwhelming uh, when you look at the code and how the code talks about being uh, compatible with the space and not overwhelming. So I do think it is. So if I had been here initially, I, I, I would have said that. I think we've kind of gotten beyond that, um, and, I, and I'm in the minority there, but I think it is too big, uh, and, and I don't like the removal of the other half of the building because I think that is a beautiful building as it stands. Um, with the and I think that's one of the nicer kind of streets to walk down. You see the shops in in the rest of that building. It's a nice part of the neighborhood. Um, so that those are those are just my two cents. But I think um, as far as the code goes, I, I think it's overwhelming, and I think that there's some history being being removed. And be just for your point of reference, we did try to kind of look at the window. Rhythms of the storefronts, uh, the, you know, we're talking about the pedestrian yeah. experience coming through, and we try to put that back 
and uh, create that ground floor experience and push everything else towards the towards the back of the building so that you could maintain that pedestrian you know um, street level experience as it sort of going down the street yeah and i think that i think that will have a good experience as far as that goes mm -hmm. um but again a much a much larger experience mm -hmm. yeah that was a that, that piece of building was something that we talked about yeah terms. that's what I, I think i think key to final kind of ruling on that was understanding where that building started and what is there today is not is not original I mean, just those old things were added sure later on sure it's creating creating what i think succeeds right now and not that um you know we've run into this several times so uh, the old in, uh, fire insurance building that is now sure. Columbus Museum of Art, there was a whole list of uh, issues on that back piece that we took off that became part of Pizzuti. So it's like historically we focused on the jewel piece of the architecture and not so much the back support buildings because they weren't, um, they weren't, they were built later, they were built in segments and really the front piece the prop pieces were the ones that we really focused on. So this is kind of the same situation. And, and I'm, you know, I'm under the belief that we're adding a jewel to the back now that's going to really be cherished, you know, as this gets built. Um, it's a really, really handsome building. building. Since the balconies are such a dominant feature, it'd be helpful to see more details about what those are, both the underside and the railings, because from a pedestrian experience, you're seeing a lot of horizontal plane there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think one of the things this rendering did not do as well as the earlier one is that it shows a very dark underside, which brings your eye to it. If you go up and look at the one we did before, it was lighter. I think that's just a, you know, our intent is to make it, you know, um, lighter and airier, I guess, but rather than bring attention to the, you know, uh, right color. Of it. Yeah. So, the, what's the actual color of it? Is we're trying to match the brick that's around of the underside of that piece. It's just in my rendering piece. You know, the underside always renders to some point. Apply it. Try and but still materials and details for that would be helpful. Yeah. Anything else you guys? The comments? Yeah, we're, we're really hoping that we can get a blessing for the ground floor so we can advance for our e efforts uh, on this in terms of. Um, I, I think our goal is next time we come back to bring brick and window samples and those types of things, limestone, you know, but I think that's kind of where we're at in mean, the process. Uh, but I think, it will, you know, our expectation is it will reflect what we're showing in the rendering here in terms of palette and you know those types of things and you know with, with answering a few of the details on dropping windows down and and um, you know a few changes that we've discussed today um but i really feel like we're um you know through a lot of the significant design process and hopefully we can i get your blessing on that so we can advance you know those efforts I think we'll miss next month's meeting because it just has to be submitted so quickly. Yeah. And um, so we're, yeah. I think our goal is to come back at the end of April with uh, the details you've asked for, the changes you've asked for, uh, materials, and uh, for an actual full submittal to be approved. That's our goal. But just due to timing and trying to get to that utility work and all of that stuff, you know, that's such a long process that. We, you know, we'd like to get as much blessing as we can so that we can keep moving with that. It's very difficult to come in with, you know, a 12 story large building and and have it all done and then say, nah, what is that balcony or that balcony, right? So we're, hopefully we get some helpful feedback, but we do need to be moving that ground point. Feelings on uh, didn't we do that with Kaufman? How did we do that? 
So Kaufman traded off between Sarah and I. So I don't quite remember. Okay. Does it need to be a formal approval or can we say we are in support of the ground floor and you know we'll, we'll still pack it, you know, package it all up still for April and that's one approval? But I don't know if we need more than that, sure. I mean, you could do that. The applicant asked, it sounds like her vote. Um, I think for Kaufman, like we broke up the lighting and like the landscaping from the overall design, but. I'm also not 100% sure because I haven't taken a deep dive into that file in a while. Well, if I can remember correctly, I think they had some kind of, we had, you know, there wasn't a formal, um, there wasn't a formal process to say, yes, we bless this, but there was an informal process that said, we're okay with this direction. I think you need to keep going forward on refining to get to the next stage where we can actually say yeah your name that's what i think happened i think that the only the only other thing the commission broke out was demo but that was very specifically yeah, contingent was, on yes. a final design yes so that was the kind of this is okay but we're not going to release it until we've got the final drawings yes so i don't know how that translates into your lingo but that's kind of what we did which sounds like what you're recommending anyway to similar to a conceptual review to provide commentary meanings, but not a formal vote until we're completely there. Yeah, and as I said, I'll leave it up to the commission. But if it helps the applicant with like a straw poll. I was just gonna suggest that. But then, yeah. Anything we can get with the straw poll. You know, the more formal the better, but anything we have. And then again, specifically, you guys are I'm really interested in building height, which really we've already kind of done that yeah. straw poll on massing, which to some degree goes in line with that. Um, awnings over the right of way and then vehicular drop off pickup. So, straw poll? Yeah. So, for the project with the alterations of the windows and the limestone? Yes. On the first floor? Yes. 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 So all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. No, it's not a formal. I, I guess I'm going to say aye in favor because it, it's moving forward. So in favor of those changes, yes. Okay. Um, so that was that was an informal vote, but um, take it as you will on <laughs> the uh, opinion of the commission. Uh, uh, yeah, if I hit my head. 62 things can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell you. Don't let that happen. <laughs> so if you lose your memory, it's up to the right. rest of us to. I'm just saying. It's on TV. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, it's a it's a very very nice looking project. I, I I understand the concern of the the scale of this building. It's a it's a large building, which. Um, um, Again, I understand that those concerns. I would spend some time walking this site, you know, especially coming from the west approach. And I think there's an obvious void there. Um, still argue that maybe it doesn't need to be this be this big, but I don't think it is out of line with where we are heading. Anything else? I think that's that's it. Thank you for thank you. Hello. Still so the we will be making a motion to continue. Oh, yes. If I can have that. Yes. Uh, a motion on application BD 2302006 21 West Hubbard. Uh, motion to continue uh, the application. It was second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good luck. All right, and we'll circle back to number one, which I already read the staff report for, but that is for the solar panels, and the applicant does not appear to have shown up. We can choose to approve that. With the yeah, as long as there's nothing additional, typically, if you want to approve it with minor alteration. Yeah, I'm I'm I think good. we should just go ahead and approve yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, yeah. I think we're we're probably we probably want to, yeah, though, this is needed. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. probably, probably would have done that if we had. Yes, yeah. yeah, but the weather didn't allow for it. So All right. Unfortunately, so I heard a motion from Commissioner Hissom to approve as submitted. Yep. Second. 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 Hit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That's the end of our agenda. Correct. Correct. No new business. No old business. Okay. Yeah. The only thing is, is I'll follow for that picture for you. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to have a motion, motion to, to adjourn? adjourn? Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. All righty, and we are adjourned. Let us get everything offline here.